Hi, welcome to the Stitch TV show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilt talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us for twice monthly talk shows, <gasps> video tutorials, virtual stitch ins, and book clubs. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by our friends at Inmart and QT Fabrics. You can learn more about them in the links in the show notes. So today we have our wonderful cotton thread. Yes. Iris, Ooh, the white, which, you know, got a little patriotic thing happening with the red, white, and the blues. I know. Which Golds. you would think that we planned. Not we exactly. totally didn't. Nope. Not exactly, but <laughs> it still looks good with the Radiance line from Dan Morris for QT Fabrics. I'm so glad we turned this around because now I'm in love with the yellow. Which I'm attracted to yellows anyway, but I'm in love with these very much so. Like, it's my favorite now of the line. The pinks are nice. Purples are cool, but the yellows are, like, selling it for me. Okay. In fact, I think I need some of this one. Just saying. You're not allowed to cut this up. Why didn't they tell me that? They told me that, and that's me telling you that now. Look at this authentic moment we're having on camera now. <laughs> so what are we talking about today, Lynn? How sad I am that I don't get any of this fabric. And also... <laughs> oh, diffusible, different, <laughs> different... <laughs> uh, I know. Different diffusible products. <laughs> and 10 techniques that every quilter should master. We're joined by my quilt that it was from the closing of a shop in Atlanta called Little Quilts, and this was a quilt that hung in their shop that I bought the sample of, and it's a great example of traditional um, piecing applique. It's hand quilted. Um, it's got cute little hexes that I would never do, um, but I just love it. I thought it was a sweet quilt, and I had the opportunity to purchase something from my friend's shop So when it was closing. So, speaking of shops, yes, you've been traveling around a lot, doing some lectures. I have. Seen anything fun? I have been traveling, doing some lectures. I've got a bunch this month coming up that I will be um, doing some workshops on, and I'm excited about those. I haven't been in shops, though. Mm -hmm. It's been at guilds, so I haven't been able to be out there and see a bunch of stuff. But all the guilds have been super great. And classes are always fun. I love teaching. It's one of my favorite things to do. I think it's great. Doing vase. I've got a vase class coming up. A couple of vase classes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a couple other classes. Fun. Lots of fun stuff. I know. I know. I, the only thing I regret about doing this is that I really enjoy when we get to lecture to guilds together. And because of her, you know, work schedule, she doesn't always get to travel with me. So I'm always kind of disappointed because we have so much fun together that I'm sad you don't get to come sometimes. I mean, sometimes you do. What I meant was sometimes you do join me, and I'm very glad about that. But you don't always get to join me. So. And we have not yet figured out consistently workable technology for me to just, like, pop on and FaceTime. Yeah. <laughs> Because that could be fun, but like, oh, Wi-Fi is not always what we would hope for. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. We do have fun Wi-Fi meetings on a regular basis. We do. So. We haven't uh, had one in a while. Right. We tried to have one the other day, but I was at a restaurant, so I couldn't talk to her. And I was like, no, I, I want to like, be a dragon and share this fun idea. <laughs> I had to. She shut me down. I just shut her down. Shut me down. I had to hold the phone up close to my ear to hear her, so I couldn't see her and hear her. Didn't work out well. Oh, well. Oh, well. We'll do it again, I'm sure. So, our yes. first topic, fusibles. Yes. Do you use them? Yes. So, <laughs> yes, we both use them. Great. All right. Done. And then. next topic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, there are a bunch of different um, types of fusibles. And fusible just means that you're sticking one thing to another thing via a chemical means. Right. That's what it means. Also science. Also, yes. So I wrote down a list of fusibles that I use. And I was going to talk about the pros and cons, I think, of each one of them. 
And then I was going to throw a fun wrench in the works. I and know. Talk about I've seen blue. I just, I just <laughs> saw her wrench and went. That is a thing that you use to stick a thing to another thing with. It is a glue stick. Did you bring that or did I brought it? it. Oh. I also brought this. Oh yeah. School glue. So yes. these are common uh, available in the U.S. And in just a few months, there will be massive sales because it'll be back to school time. Yes, yeah, so go get them when they're on sale. <laughs> but I Definitely. use both of these as fusible products. In I do clothing. too. Because I, I figured you would not think all of the these. Time. I, you know, I didn't at all. Hmm. And I use the glue stick all the time. And the key thing is these are washable. So you're not going to end up with like weird stiff glue stuff stuck in your quilt. Yep. So very Elmer they're, school glue. Or washable glue. Yes. Um, so, I, and those are cheap because they're not meant for quilting. Kind of like anything targeted to the wedding market is marked up. It feels like sometimes we as quilters are like, oh, this product seems nice. Oh, it's got four quilters on it. Oh, now it's 10% more expensive. <laughs> yes. So there are alternatives. Right. So there's a lot of what they call paper-backed fusible webs. Yes. And why would you want a paperback on it? Okay. So this is very commonly used in applique. And what you would do is you would draw your image on the paper side. In and reverse. Then in the reverse. Like a letter. Very important. Right. If you have a, a, you know, a figure pointing here and it's important that they point to the right, you have to draw it pointing to the left so that when it's the front side of the fabric points to the right. Does that make sense? So you draw it in reverse on the paper side, and then there's no way you can see this, but on the reverse side, you can feel that there's a little film on it, and that is actual glue. Um, there's a Pellon product called Wonder Under. It's probably one of the most common products out there. And um, so what you do is you would take your fabric, and you would glue it to wrong side to the glue, right side up, and you would heat set that to the glue. Do you use steam or a dry iron? I use a dry iron for Wonder Under. There's one that you do use steam on, and I'll talk about that one. Um, but you used it too, so you can mm -hmm. talk about how you like it or don't like it. So then you would cut out on the line that you drew, and then you will have then you can glue it down, take the paper away and then glue it down on whatever you want. Um, this probably didn't use this technique only because this looks hand done. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure it's hand done. Yeah, you can tell the edges are turned under. Right. So, Wonder Under, and then the, another one called Soft Infuse is the same product um, where it has a paper back that you draw on and then the glues in front of it. The difference is soft infuse comes away it's just from soft fuse. I'm sorry, soft fuse, you're right. This is why I'm not in charge of this stuff. Soft fuse. Um, the the web is more dense mm -hmm. on soft fuse. And I think if I got to choose between the two of these, they do the exact same thing. Soft fuse has a better feel to it. It doesn't feel heavy. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes when you're adding glue to applique, it's stiff. This one doesn't. Probably why it's called soft. Um, the only thing I don't like about soft fuse is that it separates from the paper really easily. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be careful and messy with it. Whereas Wonder Ezra doesn't. And the other thing I like about both of these products is that they don't have a, um, you can't burn them out. Mm -hmm. Every time you apply heat to them, they re... Reactivate. Yes. Yes. Um, which makes them really good if I want to. But they're permanent. Once you put it down and put an iron to it, you can't lift it up and move it. It's there. You're done. Unless you're really bad at pressing. And then you can, but it still looks bad if you do it. Well, there's glue left on the place where you're pulling it up from. That's the problem. Yep. So the other one that's really popular that you see people use is this product called, and you can tell I use these, is a product called Heat and Bond. And there's two different um, levels of Heat and Bond. There's Heat and Bond Light, and there's Heat and Bond 
Ultra. Ultra. Ultra does not require sewing. To keep the thing in place after it's fused. If you sew through it, you can break a needle. You certainly will gum up your needle. I have done that. It's bad. It's really heavy, stiff glue. But the difference is, this one is a chemical. It's, it's a different chemical base than like normal glue. Um, and you can burn it out. In other words, if you put heat on it for too long of a time, it will not glue anymore. I thought it was the inverse, that this one you could glue many, or heat many times in the other. Mm -mm. Hmm. That explains some things. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But what I like about this one is that, that the soft fuse and the Wonder Under doesn't do as well is this one seals the edges of your, you do them the exact same way with the paper back, and then you would glue the wrong side to the back of the fabric, and then you would cut it out on the line, and then you take that to your project, glue it down. This seals the edges really well, but if you use the, the iron on it too long, it will stop working. But it does seal the edges, so I think it washes better than some of the others. Although soft fuse washes well, really well. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's heat and bond, light, not ultra. Ultra, I don't use. Ultra, I have, but it's for craft. Yeah, I can see it where it's and not quilt. Where I've done dimensional elements on a quilt, like I've made poinsettia leaves or hydrangea leaves. Right. So you're using that ultra heat and bond between two layers of fabric, cutting it out, and then kind of shaping it a bit and attaching it to the quilt as a decorative element, not as a thing that is fused to the quilt top like an applique piece would. Right. It's dimension. Right. You use it a lot in baskets. I've, I've I seen have, some creative applications that way. I have seen it in, um, now that you're talking about it, I've seen it when someone wanted to create, yeah, on vases or whatever, and they create a three-dimensional stuff, and they curl it, and mm -hmm. yeah, it looks good. All right. When would you use, we've talked about single-sided paperback, when would you use double-sided? This is the only double-sided that I'm aware of. I could be wrong, but this is, is this? called Steamaseam 2. And they have two different versions of this, too. There's a light, and then there's a just, just a demon regular. seed, too. I like the regular. I don't buy the light. Pretty sure that's what I bought. Yes? Yeah. That's, that's what we just have. bought. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this is double-sided. And what I've used this for is the big mosaic quilts that I've done. I've used Steema Seam, too. Now, Laura Heine's technique also uses Steema Seam 2, and that's the one Pam just finished with the um, truck with the flowers on it. Mm -hmm. So what's, why this is good is what you do is you take one side of the paper off and you reveal the glue, and it's tacky. These others are not tacky at all. You glue down your fabric to the glue side using a dry iron. You cut out your shape that you're going to use, and then you reveal the other side of the glue of the paper, right? It's also tacky. But now this becomes repositionable, where it's not repositionable with the other two. So it allows you to hold stuff in place, and it works really well with um, collage work. Mm -hmm as well as mosaic work. Um, but you have to set it with a steam iron to get it to permanently stick. Right. Yes. So that's why you had, that's, this allow, it's repositionable. That's why this is. I don't know that it burns out, but I've never done it because really, I don't think it's designed to. Mm -mm. You didn't have any problem with that, did you? Nope. So, and it's, I've seen the tackiness go away. Yeah. But I've done, you know, 70 by 60 inch quilts that this was being rolled on and off a, um, you know, long arm with little. So I've seen the tackiness go away. In fact, I've seen it on my rollers on my quilt. 
but I but then I would use the Elmer's glue to help it stay before I steamed it down. Mm -hmm. So that's that one. And then the last one I have, this one is called Misty Fuse. Um, I have used this to do landscape quilts. Yeah. Where I'm not, it's more freeform. There's not a defined shape that I'm tracing. This gets laid down as a base, and then I am putting, like, little confetti bits of cut-up fabric on it. And then you iron it. And then you iron it. Yep. Now, what we don't I don't have, use this very often yeah, at all. That's I have, what I, this is probably it of my... Of what I have of it. Yeah. Now, I have also used this in conjunction with uh, a product called Bone Ash, which is like a sprinkle fusible. It's Yeah, it is. And it, it's very odd of like, well, how does this even work? I've but used you, it, but it... You put this down, you put your confetti piece on top, and then I sprinkled the Bone Ash and put a piece of tulle on top of that. Right. And with a pressing cloth, because you don't want to gunk up the bottom of your iron. Right. Have Steam it fused down. it, yeah. All the piece, all Didn't the layers. Did you do together. like a fish or something? I did. The angry goldfish. He hangs on my desk at work, in my day job. <laughs> I like that. It's fun. So, I like all of these products. I'm not gonna say I don't like one above the other, but they serve different purposes. They totally serve different purposes. Um, and I. I use them all. I've used all of these. The Misty Fuse I don't use very much. Rarely do I use it, but this I've used a ton. Heat and Bond, Wonder Under, Soft Fuse, Soft Fuse, Soft and Fuse. Soft Fuse. Soft Fuse I've used a ton. I like them. I use them all the time. Oh, applique sheets are important when using this product or... Parchment paper. Parchment paper. Um, those are really good. And I think I did a video of how to layer mm -hmm. some of these, which is very helpful when using. And I think I'm pretty sure I use Wonder Under for that or Soft Fuse. Yep. Because those are my two, those are the two go-tos for machine applique for me. The most expensive, I think, of the three of them are of them, Steam a Seam. Yeah. Most expensive, if you're just buying it, um, because it's it kind of it's it's a really great product, but I think it's just because of how it's made and the two sides and yeah, and I think because typically like there's two width sizes available for it, twelve inch or twenty four inch 18, wide, eighteen too. Oh, I saw I when I okay. yeah I saw when I ordered it. As opposed to the Wonder Under, which can come on a bolt. I mean, you can buy like a, pa a roll of it in a package. Or of it, yeah. Or you can get it by the yard at certain mm -hmm. big box stores. So, and it, it, it'll be tempting to be like, I'm just going to get a bunch so then I don't have to go to the store. But it will lose effectiveness after months, years. It, it will age. I had and a bolt then, that aged that I had to throw out. Yeah. So it may be tempting to be like, I'm just going to buy a bolt. But unless you're doing it, and like that's the only type of thing you're doing and you're using it consistently, yeah, just be wary that it might be too old to actually work. Yep. I think that was, I've not had that problem lately, though. And yeah. I've had a bolt for a while, and it's been fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I haven't seen that with soft fuse, and I've had that for a while. Mm -hmm. It's been fine. Um, but, yeah, I did have an older thing of Wonder Under that I had to throw out. I wouldn't. That aged, but I probably had it 15 years yeah. before I really got into applique. Yeah. And doing stuff and being crazy. Crazy. But I, I'm glad you brought that glue because I forgot about that. Yeah. Any other fusible products you use? Not within quilting. I do have some quarter inch or half inch fusible tape. Yes. Which is like a little skinny roll of just what looks like the misty fuse. It's just on a, and but I use that for clothing and like keeping hems in place. Yes. It's a little too wide to try and use for sticking down the binding when you're hand turning and stitching it down. Instead, I have used um, just a thin line of the Elmer's uh, white glue 
to hold that down. But then I get into trouble sometimes where if you if you don't have a light hand with it, it can really gum it up and be very stiff. And then it's hard to like actually stick your needle through to stitch it down. Yes, that's the that's the drawback to the Elmer's. Yeah. If you use a really health heavy sewing through, it's difficult. Yeah. But it works great. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to use fusible products. I mean, they're they're really good. Um, and makes what would take you a very long time to do needle turn. <laughs> I use those thin strips or glue to do vines on applique. Hmm. Because you just lay that down, iron it to that, and then you, you know, especially if it's thinner than the vine that you're doing, then it yeah, holds it Yeah, you don't want place. to try and use the same size because it might get on the out. background. Yeah. yeah, that's hard to get rid of. Yeah, but that helps with the vines. It also helps with um, just holding a bunch of stuff in place before you get to it because you're not always sewing where you need something down until... And if you're using pins, then you're ending up sticking yourself. Oh. I think I like these because I don't like using pins to, you know, because I'm going to hurt myself. Yeah. <laughs> like, we already know I have the the skill set to hurt myself, so anyway. Yep. All right, so glue it down. Sure. Use all the things. All the things. <laughs> Now we're going to take a closer look at the quilt behind us, and we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. So I wrote this down saying I wanted to know what Pam thought about if you had to pick 10 techniques that you feel all new quilters and quilters should master, what would they be? Mm -hmm. So I've, I've, I wrote down 10. And you told I wrote me down six, and there's already some overlap. And I know some of mine are weirdly different from yours. So. Oh, that's good. All right. So my very first thing, which probably shouldn't be the first thing, was um, quarter-inch seam. That was my number two. I didn't put them in order, though, so... I probably should have. So, yes, why quarter inch seam? Uh, so, if you want to achieve a look and do a certain type of quilt that requires precision and things matching at intersections. Okay, you got to have it. You got to have it. Now, do you think there's a big, um, this may be controversial, do you think there's a big difference between the quarter inch seam and a scant quarter inch? I think the difference is about two threads. <laughs> Is that a big difference? It depends. Are you a tiny ant or are you a giant person? If you're Shaquille O'Neal, not a big difference. <laughs> well, I know people like, you have to sew so a scant quarter inch. And sometimes I think, really? Like, I don't know that maybe it's because I don't or maybe I do and I don't realize it. But I don't know. I'm not a big scant quarter inch is so important. Well, that really ties to my number three. Okay. What's your number three? Letting go. <laughs> you should learn to... That's no... In many I... ways. Like, it's a... T it is, like... Uh, and specifically the... Am I really going to sweat over the amount of precision in this quilt top? Or am I going to sweat over how this quilt is received into the world? What if the person I give it to uses it for a dog bed and I just spent 11 billion hours on it? I'm like, well, you have given them a gift. It is theirs to do with what they wish. So right. you have to learn to let things go. If you are yep, let it go. putting these out into the world, you cannot control how other people perceive or use the objects that you make. That's true. That's true. So there you go. I went a little philosophical on mine. Uh, my last one's philosophical. So, all right. My last one says, relax. It's not perfect. It's not going to be perfect. It'll never be perfect. See, like You'll be okay. Three. It's fine. You'll be okay. How other people use it is what, what I hear you saying. Mine's like, just relax in the process that this is not going to be perfect and at least try at least get out there and put something out there <gasps> which is my number one learn to take risks <laughs> you 
Because yes. I made a lot bolder choices when I was first beginning quilting, where I was like, I didn't know how not to oh, free yeah. motion quilt, so I was just out there doing it. And then I got about three years in and had read all the blogs and now was like, <gasps> I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> and then I stopped t- taking risks because the first quilt that I finished for myself had a lot of like wacky designs in the free motion quilting. And then there was like a whole good like seven years of just meandering and stippling. <laughs> like, and we're taking it back a notch. We're not going to do. Yeah. But you got to take risks. I yeah. agree with that. All right. So my next, uh, so that was one, it's quarter inch seam, 10, relax, it's not perfect. And then my other eight are very much like skill sets. Mm -hmm. So cutting, you really need to learn how to cut and get good at using a ruler, using a rotary cutter. For safety purposes, if for nothing else. Oh, God, yes. Just learn how to cut. Pressing. (laughs) Yep. Yep, I got pressing on my list. Pressing. Versus ironing, you want to press. You want to press, exactly. So those are basic stuff. And then this is, like, uh, if we had to circle one that I hate or that I'm not good at or that I don't enjoy, it's this one, and it's binding. You really got to learn how to bind. Or not. You could just face everything. It's still kind of a binding. It's still... Like, I, I'm going to face this quilt that I've got on the long arm, and I'm still like, oh, i got to face that quilt. <laughs> I don't think it gets better. It's still kind of binding. Anyway, but, yeah, binding. Mm-hmm. Like, for a skill set for someone who's a quilter to master, binding's a good. Yeah, because that is going to be one of the parts of the quilt that will wear out the quickest. And so yeah. if you're doing it well from the start, they're going to have a longer life, and you're less likely to get a call saying, love this quilt. Can you come fix the binding? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> You'll get the show, Judge. Binding needs work. <laughs> so, um, and then the, so those are like the basic stuff, quarter inch seam, cutting, pressing, binding, basic things that you need. I went a little wacky. Okay. And I said, attaching long borders, particularly I, if you want to do bed quilts. <laughs> I have that too, borders without being friendly. Which means that they're not like waving at you because they're. Because your outer border is uh, longer than your uh, center of your quilt, which is how that happens. Right. So it it doesn't hang straight. It kind of it waves. <laughs> it's yeah. in a wave. Which so is they when, call it a friendly border. Which is when the glue is helpful because I have used mm-hmm. the White Elmer school glue to just lay down a little bead and then kind of get my center points aligned mm-hmm. and then press it down. And that saves me from pinning because I will stick myself. <laughs> Proper first aid maybe should be on this list too, but you know. Oh, good point. I have <laughs> some my finger bonus eleventh first aid. <laughs> okay, so I've got borders on there too. Um, basic free motion. Just learn how to do some basic free motion. So that I don't think there's anything wrong with you paying somebody to quilt your quilts. I think that's a great thing to do. Um, And there's a lot of long-arm quilters that that's their business, and let's support them. But I think everyone who's a quilter should just know some basics to to free motion their own stuff. Smaller projects. On smaller projects. Like, you don't have to do a big king-size quilt, but you can do a table runner. Pot holder. You can do a, yeah. Mug rug. A mug rug. And if you just learn how to do some basic free motion... You know, quilting, I think that that's a good technique for you to know. Not, and it doesn't have to be. But this was supposed to be what you're supposed to master. Like, go out and, like, take on the world and be the best at it. Basic free motion quilting. Every quilter should be able to master that. Hmm. 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 That way they can make a whole quilt themselves. Cutting, piecing, right? Okay, what's your next one? Proper storage of quilts. Uh, I knew I'd get over this one. Totally didn't think of that. Oh. Okay, what's proper storage? Well, it depends on the quilt. Like, if it's a bed quilt, store it on bed. Done. And we're done. <laughs> uh, but, like, so when you're storing quilts longer term for more than a few months, understanding how fiber reacts to the way it's treated, and if it's don't stick it in a cedar chest without a protective barrier around it because cedar is acidic and will degrade the fibers or if it's cotton batting cotton has a really good memory about it and you need to refold it so you don't just get weak points in your quilts or storing it away from sunlight or do you need to roll it or you know kind of all these 
the way to take care of the quilt so it will be around for as long as you want it to. Right. And if you have like a wall hanging like this, don't hang it right in front of a bright window and without knowing that it's going to fade. Yeah. Because sun damage is real. Yeah, it is. It's very real. Oh, and don't, 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 don't put it in a plastic bag. No, it needs to breathe. Yes. It will be in there screaming, going, look out. <gasps> it's, anyway, okay, so my next three are kind of... Specialty techniques. Specialty techniques that I think if you master these specialty techniques, you'll be like a, just a well-rounded quilter. Um, curved piecing. It's not hard. It's not as hard as everybody says it is. It's just, I think, just take a class on it or just, it's a it's a good basic technique, Y seams, which we talked about in a previous episode. And applique. Applique is not hard. It just takes more time. And now I'm not saying this is going to be your bag, but you should kind of know how to do it. And the other one I should have put on here which would have been 11, is paper piecing or foundation piecing. Yeah. And I think the thing about applique, it doesn't have to be the entire focus of your quilt. Absolutely, like it, yeah. you're not, You don't have to make a Baltimore album, which no. is all applique. Yeah. But using that technique to add additional elements to a pieced quilt can be really beautiful and add some depth to like the scrappy quilt that we talked about a couple right. episodes ago of like, oh, it's just going to be this whole scrappy piece thing. And then I thought, oh, it needs something else. I want to applique, you know, the initial or the monogram for the baby or right. this additional design element. And it's not some like, oh, gosh, I had to go and like needle turn. Like, right. oh, I'm just going to do a circle and some rays. Even and if it put... just personalizes it right. for that person who you're gifting it to. Yeah, I think that that's really important. And that's it's not that hard. It's really not that hard. So applique, paper piecing, just because every once in a while you run into those patterns. And if you know the basics of it, you can pretty much yeah. do and, paper piecing. And I've done paper piecing where it's super crazy intense and you could construct it no other way. But you could also use it for getting really good precision on basic units like half square triangles. Absolutely. Yep. Definitely. But again, if you've embraced my number one, or no, my number three of just letting go, then you, you don't need it. <laughs> Relax. It's not going to be perfect. Yeah. So those are my 10. Quarter inch seam, cutting, pressing, binding, curve piecing, Y seams, basic free motion, borders with without being friendly, applique, relax, it's not perfect. 11 would be paper piecing. Taking risks. I like that proper one. Proper storage. I like that one. Those so are we all end good. up with like 13. Yeah. Between the two. We of have us. 13 techniques you should master. If you want, and then just do whatever. Or just, again, my number three, just let it go. Let it go. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, now they should be, now they have jobs to do, things to do. I mean, yeah. Yeah. What about all the stuff we left off? Well, all? what are the frivolous things they don't need to master? Like, psh, don't worry about that. Embellishment. Whatever. Take it or leave it. Oh, see, I just think that's another level. Yeah. No, I was going to say, there's not a time limit on these, though. Oh, no. You, know, you don't if have to it do them takes, all in the first year of quilting. Yeah, Good exactly. Heavens. If this takes you in the next 30 years, then yay. Well, you got a to-do to list. Yeah, you got a to-do list. Yeah. It's not a time limit on this at all. No. Except for relax, it's not perfect. That you should start today. I'm okay with that. And take risks. You're going to give them a pass. That's good. And take risks that they should start today. Because I like every quilt should start out with what if. What if I do this? Just that question. Sometimes that question is what if I don't listen to Lynn and <laughs> do this anyway? And then I come back. Like, oh, dang, she was right. <laughs> <laughs> dang it. <laughs> I can't say that I've heard people say to me, a few times, maybe. Oh, you were right. <laughs> I've heard maybe you say that to me a couple times. You're a lot better about not rubbing it in than I am. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, told you. <laughs> I don't rub it in. No, she doesn't at all. <laughs> but I'm. But I, when I give advice, I'm kind of like, well, you should probably do this or try this. 
And then my friends will go off and do whatever. And I don't care if they do it or not. Like, I have no, I don't have a dog in that fight. I don't care if you take my advice or not. Um, <laughs> I just, I don't care. It's okay if they don't. It's just my opinion. It's my two cents. I don't, you know. So do what you want. I mean, I think a risk is you taking the risk, not me taking the risk. And just think about it. Most quilts, many quilts are used on beds. And most of the time you're in there, your eyes are closed. <laughs> so you don't have to look at it. That's fine. Or you're flipping over the back. Most of times. the quilts I make are on walls. So You can turn them around. It's true. That's true. They could be so controversial. You do not want to see the front of them because you don't like butterflies. That's what I'm working on right now, butterflies. Yeah, if I never <laughs> sew another butterfly again, I'll be like, oh, thank God I never have to see another butterfly. Yep, that's the best thing about mini quilts is you never have to make that quilt again. Exactly. That's true. And I like what you say, too. You're practicing for your next quilt. Technically, I ripped that off from Annie Smith. Oh, well, I thought that was really good. She's good. So, yeah, <laughs> just practice for your next one. And if you hate, if you try whatever, like curve piecing, and you hate it, do a table runner and make, you know, three blocks and go, you know, this isn't for me. I never have to do it again. Number three, let it go. Let it go. <laughs> so There you go. There you go. So what is your 11th hour addition to our top 10 or 14th list? <laughs> yes, I would say 14-ish. Just let us know. You can leave a comment on the blog or the YouTube episode or in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches. And that's all we have for this episode. So today's show was made possible by Inmart and QT Fabrics. Find links to these wonderful companies in the show notes for today's episode. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Think Productions for helping produce the stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on the notifications on YouTube. So our next virtual stitch-in is Friday, June 14th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast live on our YouTube channel. Our next book club episode will be June 28th. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, along with links to purchase fan gear, quilt patterns, video classes. Tune in next time for more Quilting Chat with Friends.